If you are also majoring in architecture like I am, you would probably be aware by now that we model a lot a lot. From all the design phases from beginning to end, you're constantly doing study models and of course obviously in the final production you need a beautiful final model to present with your building proposal. And if you invest in a 3D printer you can actually save boatloads and boatloads of time just because you can quickly print out all of your study models and the workflow is diminished. So what I mean by that is that if you don't have a 3D printer you model your digital model in Rhino and then you have to unroll all the surfaces and then you have to make a template to laser cut or print out a template to hand cut everything, hand cut everything and then glue everything together versus if you have a 3D printer then you just send that digital model to your printing software, press print and there you go, pop out your model and you can actually save a lot of time. My my senior year at Ohio State I did 3D print out my entire final model. It still to this day is one of my favorite models that I have personally crafted myself and I actually made a whole vlog about it if you guys want to check it out here. Um, I made it about a year ago, oh my gosh, but I just, I love my 3D printer and you can also use it for non-architecture related stuff too so I'm a huge advocate for 3D printing and I think it's really pushing architecture forward in a a new direction that it's never actually been pushed in before. Regardless, if you yourself own a 3D printer or not, I personally believe that by owning a 3D printer, a lot of the pain is released. <laughs> Economically speaking, owning a 3D printer also can kind of save money here and there. My 3D printer, when I print something, it costs maybe like $2 here and there just because of the PLA filament. If you do buy a more expensive printer, the more you use it, the more you save. So here is a small list of five 3D printers that I would recommend getting if you are a beginner or a new architecture student that would really like investing in a 3D printer. There's a lot out there on the market. I have actually had two 3D printers. The first one I ended up returning just because it was so bad. It was awful. Okay, so let's just get right into the top five. <laughs> girl Nat here. If you are new here, my name's Natalie. I like unraveling the complex world of architecture and really breaking down our built environment. Um, if you are new here, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. We have Patreon, Discord, all that good stuff, so do whatever you feel comfortable with. So leave me a comment down below if you would like more videos like this or Nat, I don't know. Up to you. Anyway, let's just get right into it. Another thing to keep in mind though, if you don't have a 3D printer, the reason why 3D printing is relatively cheap in comparison to the alternative of hand modeling everything is that you will need to spend so much money in model making materials like bristol chipboard types of glue yeah there's just a lot of things to consider so yeah just a side note just keep that in mind number five is the flash forge finder this is actually a really great first 3d printer to own and have this printer actually comes fully assembled right out the box which is great um my 3d printer was not that forgiving but <laughs> so you really don't have to lift a finger to put your first 3D print out there and print everything. It also has some Wi-Fi connectivity capabilities and it also has a removable bed which is great for beginners. However, a major downside though is, is that it does not have a heated bed and that means you really can't use a PLA filament. Now I only use PLA with my 3D printer but just something to really keep in mind. Number four is the Sidewinder. It honestly, the name itself sounds like a roller coaster. This is also another relatively cheap option and perfect for beginners. This one does have a heated bed, unlike the first, and has silent printing features. Now, I personally don't own this printer. My printer is actually relatively loud, so this is a great feature, especially if you live with roommates. 
Also, it does have a very nice sleek appearance, which is great. Overall, this is a really great 3D printer to have, especially for beginners. Once again, relatively cheap, heated bed, always a plus. Number three is the MakerBot Replicator. Now, MakerBot, the company, has been producing so many 3D printers since they first really started coming out on the market. This model specifically is designed for architects and engineers, so it's a great option for you. It's really reliable and fast. I personally, once again, don't own this model, but my friend does, absolutely loves it. Actually, MakerBot is a great company because they also have an exclusive 3D online warehouse, that kind of thing, where you can share models that only you have access to with their product. And they also even have a mobile app, <laughs> which is great. The only downside my friend has is that he says the 3D print actually struggles to adhere to the bed, but you can resolve that by using spray adhesive masking tape on the bed or my personal favorite to sticking prints on the bed is using a stick of Elmer's glue actually. Number two is Creelty 3D Ender. This is great. Love it. It is a high precision 3D printer. It really just produced really high quality prints and of course the box comes with absolutely everything you need they'll give you tools and instructions as to how to assemble it customer support too is also great so if you have any questions about it just reach out to them they'll get right back to you it also has a c magnet build plate on the bed this build service plate is awesome i actually had a c magnet bed with my first 3d printer that i had and it was great i loved it i wish my printer has one now my printer which is actually number one has a glass plate but more on that later just keep in mind if you don't do your research before buying a 3d printer a lot can go wrong with 3d printing it's still relatively a new kind of technology and we're still learning a lot about it so if you don't do your research before even on the company not just the printer itself a lot can go wrong and making sure that you have high quality customer service is a really good thing to consider too. Number one and my 3D printer that I personally own is the Creelty CR10. It, this printer is just perfect for me, it meets all of my needs. Like I said, I owned one before this, returned that one, got this one so much better. Love this printer. I did opt for the larger bed size just because you can print larger things. This printer also supports multiple filament types. I only use PLA though. Overall, the print quality is great. Love it so much much and it does have a glass plate so like I mentioned before I'll use spray adhesive or a Elmer's glue stick just to ensure that the print that I am printing adheres to the bed. A con though is that this bed does not have an auto leveling feature. The first one I owned that I returned did. This was great. I wish Creelty did offer this in this printer just because it would like check off all the boxes for me. So how I personally auto level it though is I'll use a sticky note and I will hand turn all of the wheels underneath the bed and once the sticky note gently grazes the extruder then I know that the bed is level for the extruder. Overall, when you are selecting a 3D printer, please do your research. So much can go wrong with a 3D printer, like so much and I kind of went through it because I really had no direction and I didn't do my research beforehand. So just keep that in mind. Please do your research. Watching videos like this is a great way to do research. Please consider the print quality, price point, and how easy is it to use for beginners like yourself. And also, if you are a incoming freshman studying architecture at your undergraduate university, please heed my advice and hold off on buying a 3D printer. Majority of students will change their major in the United States. It's actually around 80%. They're really expensive. Just make sure that you yourself knows that architecture is in fact the major for you. And then I would recommend going through researching and then buying a 3D printer. I've seen a lot of articles where people are like, you need a 3D printer to start architecture school. That is not the case at all. I think they are just really trying to get your money. So just, you know, ease into it, lean into it, you will be a-okay, no worries. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I will leave links for all of the 3D printers that I mentioned in today's video off of Amazon, and I hope this was really helpful. I did get this question a couple times, so. All right, well, until next time, love you guys.